Hello and welcome to another battle from the Napoleon Total War Winter Cup. This is part of the matchup of uh, yeah for place three. So Silky and Goldie are playing here on Siberian Plateau against Philippe and Itchy. Philippe here is um, Portugal. He has four cavalry for Casadores and a lot of light, uh, lines. Here is Itchy with Prussia, with four cavalry and three guards. Here is Goldie with Austria. He has a kind of a weird build. Uh, he has only two light infantry, Karl Schwarzenberg, that's the six-star general. He has three Landwehr units, so militia, which is weird. <laughs> um, Hungarians, a lot of Hungarians, the Czech regiment, the first Empress own, more Hungarians and more Hungarians, so no Archduke Charles Legion. This is weird, <laughs> and only two cavalry. I don't know why he did not bring the Archduke Charles Legion, because the Archduke Charles Legion and the First Empress Own are the only Austrian units which are uh, quite good in shooting. The Hungarians and German Fusiliers have the same statistics in shooting. The, the Hungarians are only better in melee, much better. But on this map, melee is not that important. Of course, uh, you can always, if you catch your opponent, of guard you can always do quite some damage also in melee but um, yeah we will see if this works out but only two light infantry here and no Arctic Charles Legion is a weird choice together with these three militia but maybe he uses them uh, in a very good way we will see um, here is a silky dog with Prussia he has uh, yeah, the standard Standard build with Prussia, also with three guards, so no militia. Siberian Plateau is a bit attacker sided, um, as many maps. You see the composition of the forest here in the middle, which, uh, yeah, most people only play for uh, this forest in 1v1 and also often in 2v2, so uh, the composition of this forest is very important and uh, when you look at it you see that there is more forest here on the attacker side than there is on the defender side and also uh, this house does not uh, allow you as defenders to move to uh, your, your position as you want and yeah, it kind of hinders your maneuvers. We will see how Philip, uh, how Philip will, ma will manage to um, deal with this. You see that he has uh, quite a good formation. He has uh, some Cazadores here in the middle, uh, together with a double line, some line here, and a Cazadores unit here. So quite a good formation from Philip. So let's start. Both of them also have some units here in this forest because the second winning zone, apart from the middle forest, is uh, this area here. Four cavalry is actually quite a lot. Um, I think Philip uh, always played four cavalry in this tournament with Portugal so that's uh, quite interesting people normally bring less cavalry with Portugal they're forming up the grants are in the back for some reason. I do not understand this formation. Maybe he wants to melee rush uh, without shooting here. 
the double line uh, went around the house this costed uh, some some time for the Portuguese and he should have uh, deployed in light infantry formation here already but now he does it nice and the defenders have uh, quite a good position here there's a hill in front of the Prussians they don't have a line of sight on these Austrians but they are shooting against the Prussians over here and the militia is coming in followed by Hungarians that's interesting some more Fusiliers deployed here and apparently the Landwehr charges in melee they tanked all the first shots so now it would be wise to retreat them and ta uh, take over with the Hungarians if they want to melee charge but no they stopped but did not fire a volley uh, I'm confused now they fired a volley, nice. Now double line with the Hungarians. So, yeah, maybe he fires a volley with the Hungarians and charges in melee now. This would be very awesome uh, for him. Oh no, he makes squares in front of the double line. And Philippe uh, here uh, tries to save his Prussian ally uh, from a melee charge and um, made those made those Austrian squares and also made the Prussian fizzlers retreat. And the Austrians now melee charge, but the musket it's too late. The musketeers got away, and the foot guards will open fire before. No, they will not open fire before the Austrians arrive but uh, yeah the Austrians must follow this attack and they do but form squares again I mean 20 Portuguese cavalry uh, in the forest are not such a big threat actually I'm not sure if it's necessary uh, to form a square here uh, and the Austrian general is very good with his six stars but also far away for boosting the moral of the uh, for of the melee fighters here but you see that Austria gained quite some space here uh, initially the Austrians had a good position but n uh, now also uh, the Portuguese got pushed back because of the uh, Austrian push here and Prussia has a wonderful, wonderful position now. The Portuguese have their back be, uh, against this this house and uh, no forests in this area to retreat to. Nice micro here from Silky. He attacked, but unfortunately he got a shot here from the Casadores over here. nice uh, shots here from from Itchy uh, from the flank on the double line unfortunately there is a hill uh, which protects uh, the double line from most of their bullets but before uh, when they approached I think he had a quite a good line of sight here next melee charge from Hungarians is incoming I think if the if the Austrians like pushed extremely hard here in after those melee charges and uh, used all those terrain they uh, won by uh, by these uh, melee charges, I think it would have been even better. And then they could deploy lights in the forest and. Um, shoot against the Prussians outside which as they do here but at least they have some nice double lines here 
with the next Landwehr as well. And as I said, the Prussian position is quite good, and the Portuguese are having uh, troubles. But Cazadores are incoming in the forest to save the day. There are some movements around here, but I don't think there will be any activity on the flank. He's targeting the cavalry, which again I think is not necessary because the Portuguese cavalry is not such a big threat. Over here, they uh, Itchy also targeted air everything uh, on the Hungarians, and I think he shot more himself than he did hit the Hungarians here. The next landfair unit this time is incoming in melee. I mean, they will not do a lot of damage. They are here to absorb volleys and uh, especially first volleys uh, for other troops, like approaching troops. I'm not sure if this is uh, wise to just uh, waste them because, uh, as I said, in melee they are very bad and they will not kill much. They just bring chaos to their formation, which is of course also good. So here is the Czech regiment now. Unfortunately, the Prussian fusiliers here in the back shoot the Austrians in the back. But uh, you see that uh, the Prussian-Portuguese alliance only has a few uh, more trees here to hide in. Next Hungarian charge on the foot guards. Nice charge here from Goldie. The foot guards did not counter charge, so they are still able to kill some. Prussians here, even with those low numbers. Again, focusing the cavalry with all units against the cavalry that normally works quite good. So the Prussians here from Silky uh, managed to push the Portuguese uh, even further away. And yeah, th they gained a lot of space, as I said. But Austria lost extremely uh, an extremely high amount of men uh, for these for these gains. The footguards got focused down here from Silky. So he replaces them with some small musketeer unit. And all the Prussian double lines here focus the Hungarian line. So Goldie decides for another melee attack together with his one one of his Ulans, but the foot guard already waited for them. The fire it will off, so nice well done here by Itchy. He targeted the cavalry and they are out of the game basically. They have eighteen men left without doing any damage. So the Czech regiment came into melee here. But they 
once again <laughs> squared in front of the enemy against the Portuguese cavalry. And the Prussians are almost out of the forest. Another pretty bad uh, count, uh, yeah, cavalry charge here from Silky this time. It's not w very wise to charge inside the forest with lances. They uh, have a very limited speed there and can be focused easily. Portugal still has a lot of uh, troops here, a lot of reserves. But Silky also has some, and uh, the the Austrians still has uh, have some some Hungarians and also one more cavalry. So this is quite a threat. And the other team has some uh, Brandenburg Uhlans here, so an equal cavalry to the Uhlans. I don't know what this formation is here in the middle. Block formations are very bad, and of course uh, suffer a lot of casualties against the Prussian double line here of musketeers and foot guards. Also, they get focused by the Casadores. Goldie really suffers a very high price for not having more grenzes here. But he approaches again with his reserve Hungarian. Oh no, please. Don't charge your cavalry again here on the waiting units. Okay, lucky for him he got away. But he could, uh, he has no foot guard anymore. He could uh, bring his cavalry, even together with his uh, general uh, here, to this area and then take his cavalry and this one Hungarian and f uh, overflank the Prussians. So there is uh, not that much firepower against uh, his weak uh, units here in the center. More musketeer reinforcements are incoming and also a full foot guard from Silky. This would be so perfect uh, to just overflank the Prussians here and a, a much better use for the cavalry than attacking directly in a frontal charge. Th all those barricades um, hinder cavalry movements. That's why you normally see uh, only few cavalry units and rather infantry-based nations on this map. And also the forest, as I uh, pointed out, uh, hinder cavalry movements. So there are only very few areas where you can uh, use your cavalry uh, and make them pay off. So Portugal and Prussia slowly gain a bit more space again here. Prussians took over from the Austrians against the Prussians on the other side. And this foot guard, of course, is uh, deployed very well now to destroy those two Prussians. It she did not react on the full foot guard uh, standing right in front of him, so he will lose at least his musketeers here for sure now. <coughs> 
he has still uh, I mean Goldie has still has two Austrian cavalry he could run around and overflank here I think this is a real threat for the Portuguese uh, Prussian alliance Itchy has uh, or more or less full f no sorry uh, Silky has a more or less full foot guard here now uh, fighting the Portuguese now and only some more Portuguese lines are actually a threat the foot guard with 43 can't do too much anymore <coughs> Uh, the barricades also hinder your uh, target shooting orders but it was nice that he made uh, them shoot the Hungarians and not the cavalry but I don't know why he re is retreating here he could have charged the foot guards and bring broad chaos to this formation By this he lost 11 more horses without doing anything. The Portuguese double lines make a lot of damage here. Although the Prussians have a good position, they are outnumbered. And Filippo flanks the Prussians here with his Casadores. and still has one reserve line in the back nice flanking fire here from Philippil from close distance and the Austrian reserves here uh, at least this one unit from the flank comes into the middle now Itchy has his cavalry, uh, he brought it uh, on the right, he brought it here, but comes back now. Probably he's scared to, uh, from uh, of the Ulans. So the Ulans are incoming and they, Philippil did not react and Itchy also did not react. Uh, but the Casadores are out of the game even before they got charged. Musketeers are ch uh, out of ammunition and charge here in the center. There is This time there is no unit which shoots the cavalry. So they got a charge into here and bring chaos to the formation the Brandenburg Uhlans counter charge but Goldie squared here, nice Itchy tries to break the square but runs sideways here now and the uh, cavalry gets shot down Musketeers of 83 took over and have a very good position now. They are not getting shot at the moment. The Brandenburg Uhlans survived because they did not focus them. But the uh, Ulans should have attacked uh, by now. They had a lot of time to overflank and uh, attack while their formation here was in chaos. Now they don't have the numbers anymore to uh, challenge them. And the Ulans will fight alone against those small units.
the Hungarians are pretty far away, they are behind the hill, uh, the Portuguese um, shoot a bit above the hill, but yeah, they, the Hungarians don't really have a chance, uh, but there is also the reserve musketeer unit here from Itchy. So I think the Austrian army composition uh, was really bad and uh, otherwise they maybe could have had a chance. They managed to push their defenders um, pretty far away, almost out of the forest, but did not uh, have the shooting power to um, yeah, take over uh, and shoot the Prussians uh, down here so yeah with his build he would have uh, needed to com like completely rush but then it would also like cavalry so I don't know what the thought was behind it So obviously, uh, Philippe and Itchy win this game, and they also won the whole match against Silky and Goldie. So Philippe and Itchy are the th uh, yeah third in this tournament. Goldie and Silky are fourth so thank you for watching we will have a look at the end screen of course So it she did uh, quite some damage. I think mainly in the second part of the game, the Austrian rush uh, build did not work. Philippe uh, did s uh, quite some damage as well, but Silky also did pretty good. So I think, as uh, as I said, it's mainly uh, because of the Austrian army composition that uh, Austria did not make that much damage and they maybe could have won the game even with their push strategy here. So the Casadores did decent. Portuguese cavalry was mainly used against those uh, melee charges against Prussia from the Austrians, so they did not uh, kill much, but it was okay. So, good game, and see you.